Hello class, my name is Demetrius with Woodward Square Realty and I'll be teaching you how to finance a property. How many of you are looking to buy your first home here in the coming years? I know I was very excited when it was coming time to buy my first home. I just want to tell you about a couple of things that might um, burden you along the way in the beginning when it comes to getting approved for your mortgage. These are the leading factors in mortgage denial. This large area over here is debt to income ratio. That accounts for 36.2% of mortgage denials. Here in this large blue circle down here is the credit history. And that accounts for 34.2%. So those are the two largest factors that you really need to look out for. Build up a good credit history and don't build up debt too high while you're in college. Make sure that you're looking out for it and paying on your loans and always trying to get scholarships and financial aid when you can. Even if one is unable to gain approval for a traditional mortgage, there's always another way that you can own a property. And we'll talk about that in a little while. For now, we'll talk about the traditional types of financing. That includes conventional, FHA, and VA. All different types of loans. The conventional loans are the most common type of loan. You can put as little as 3% down for a down payment. Now, the more you put down, the lower your interest rate is probably going to be. There's a lot of benefits to having a conventional, conventional loan. There's not an extra premium that you have to pay along with the mortgage insurance, which you might have to pay with a FHA, FHA loan, but it is pretty stringent in terms of the term, in terms of what terms you have to meet in order to be able to finance conventionally. Conventional loans must be in compliance with Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, which are government sponsored enterprises in addition to FHFA. Not to get confused with FHFA is the Federal Housing Administration, which is FHA. And those are the loans that are insured loans made by individuals and FHA approved lenders. Unlike conventional loans though, these require an extra premium to be paid up front, and that's 1.75% so almost 2% of your total loan has to be paid up front just as a premium that doesn't go towards your loan. So that can hit you at the closing table pretty hard, but a lot of first time home buyers can only get approved for this FHA loan because of how strict the terms are to get a conventional loan, especially as a first time home buyer. You have to prove that you are a very credible buyer. So on top of the 1.75% premium up front, there's also a yearly payment of 0.45 to 1.05%. VA loans are another option, but they're options to active duty military as well as family members that might be surviving spouses or benefactors uh, to a former veteran that may be passed away. Uh, but any active duty service member or veterans are allowed to get these VA loans. And unlike FHA loans, there are no mortgage insurance, no mortgage insurance, no mortgage insurance premium or down payment required. So it's a lot less money up front besides the one-time funding fee that charges between 1.25 to 3.3% of your total loan. And that is the only fee you really have to worry about at the closing table with the VA loan. Now, if you're worried about, uh, I know I say I put this much money down, I have this much money in the bank to put down, but I really want to do a couple of fixes, get some new furniture in my new home. I don't know if I can put this much money down. Well, there's down payment assistance programs. For first time homeowners, there are state programs that exist that offer down payment assistance or DPA. Michigan State Housing Development Authority, MISHTA, is the main program in our state that allows us to get this down payment assistance. And they offer up to $7,500 for qualified first time homeowners in this state. Now, a first time homeowner in the state of Michigan is not only somebody that just is buying a home for the first time in the state of Michigan, but if you haven't owned a home for the last three years, 
then you can go ahead and apply for this down payment assistance as well because you qualify as a first time homeowner as long as you haven't owned a property in the state for the last 36 months. So the most important takeaway that I want everyone to remember is even if you can't get one of these traditional mortgages and you can't apply for this down payment assistance because you're not getting a traditional mortgage, there's always another way to own a property. And that way is seller financing. You want to make sure before you go to terms with a seller that they own a house free and clear, which means they don't own anything on the house. And if they do, you want to make sure that that's going to be paid off before the, the terms of your contract is are up. So you own a free and clear deed at the end of your contract. Uh, a seller financing agreement is like a land contract or rent to own contract. Now, the main difference in seller financing is that buyers must agree to the seller's terms, plus the down payment you have to you have to fork up up front, just like a normal loan. But if you don't pay on time, that money that you're forking up, that down payment can be taken away from you just as quickly as you can be foreclosed on, if not quicker, depending on the terms of the agreement that you signed with that seller. Another downside is the interest rates. So if you're making the land contract agreement with the seller, oftentimes that means that you couldn't qualify for a regular mortgage through a bank. Mortgages through a bank offer about a three to three and a half percent interest rate, maybe a little bit higher, but normally between that range right now, interest rates are at an all time low and have been here for some time now. But that fee can rise to as high as 7 to 10%. I've seen it even higher than that in seller financing situations because they know if you're unable to get that bank financing that they can tax you a little bit more on the back end. Even with all that, I just wanted to say traditional mortgages, down payment assistance, seller financing. There's so many different ways that you can buy a home in the state of Michigan. Please don't pay rent forever. Own your own home, own your own property, own multiple properties. Anyone can become a home owner, a home, a home owner if they are able and act on what's best for them, given the right information. And I hope I gave that to you today.